What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out another projector from BenQ. This is their brand new GP500. So shout out to the guys at BenQ for sending this over for me to review. Thank you guys. Let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Right on the top we have a box containing the accessories. Here we've got some documentation, the power cord, the remote control, batteries for the remote control, and this is the Android Smart Stick. All right, so here is the projector itself. You can see this come in this nice white color. It's got the uh, BenQ bluish front panel. In the front, you can see the sensor that is gonna be used for the auto keystone and auto focus. The lens is located up front. Here is the speaker grill, which will house four five watt speakers, which is supposed to give you 360 degree sound. All right, so let's swing it around and take a look up top. Here you can see we have the ring, which is manual. We've got the power button, volume down, volume up, Bluetooth, and then here is the light sensor. All right, so around back, we've got your 3.5 mil audio output jack, optical output, two HDMI 2.0 ins, and then two USB inputs. And on the bottom, we've got the power inlet, as well as two more five watt speakers, so you will have that 360 degree sound firing forwards and backwards. Let's swing it around to the bottom. You can see that we have some mounting spots here. So if you wanted to ceiling mount this, you would have to get the appropriate mount so you could ceiling mount this. And this does have adjustable feet, which you can use to angle it, raise it up, lower it, just so you can get a nice even level projection on your wall. All right, so specs wise, this is rated at 1500 lumens. It uses BenQ's brand new four LED light source, which differs from three LED in the fact that it has the, your standard RGB, plus has an extra LED to boost the colors, whereas three LEDs would just only have your RGB, red, green, and blue. So four LED, you get extra brightness out of it. It also has auto color calibration. So if let's say one of your colors were to prematurely start to degrade, like say your red, the auto calibration would automatically compensate for that degraded color and boost up the other color saturation to give you a nice natural color profile. And since it is LED, it'll have 20,000 hours of lamp life under normal conditions and then 30,000 hours under eco mode. It is a fairly small projector. It measures about 10 inches wide by 10 inches deep by 7.2 inches in height. I'll put the exact measurements on screen. And it is fairly lightweight, coming in at about 11.9 pounds. And the included smart stick also runs off of Android 10.0, which is gonna make this projector a smart projector so you can stream all your shows, such as Amazon Prime or YouTube, or any other thing that you can download in the Google Play Store. So let's go ahead, check this thing out, and we'll get it hooked up. All right, now let's take a quick look at some of the settings. The first section here is gonna be your picture settings. We get a few different presets here. We've got bright, living room, game, sports, cinema, and user. And here we've got sliders for brightness, contrast, color, tint, and sharpness. You can go from a zero up to a plus 15. The next section is your advanced color settings. For gamma selection, we've got a 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 1.8, 2.0, 2.1, and back to 2.2. Under color temperature tuning, you've got gain sliders for RGB, RGB offset, and under color management, if you have the proper tools, you can calibrate this projector yourself by adjusting the hue, saturation, and gain. Under Cinemaster, we've got Color Enhancer, which you can slide from a zero up to a plus 18. You should be able to see how bright and vibrant the image gets in the background as I'm turning that up and down. Under Flesh Tone, we've got a negative five up to a plus five. That's gonna give some extra warmth to the image. Under Pixel Enhancer, we've got zero up to a plus 15 as well. And as you can see, if we go back down to zero, how soft and natural the image looks. But the higher that we go up, you can see how overly sharpened that the picture gets. So depending on the type of material you're watching, that might be something that you might be interested in changing manually. For me personally, I would probably keep it at zero just to keep everything nice and smooth and not so digitally over sharpened. 
under motion enhancer 4k we've got a couple settings for this as well we've got off low middle and then high so if you want to get a slightly smoother effect you can change these settings here for that so if you want to get that high frame rate or soap opera effect look you can change that setting here now if you are watching 4k hdr material you will have the option to turn the wide color gamut on or off right now this is on but you can go in turn this off and you can notice that the picture gets a little bit cooler looking whereas with the wide color gamut turned on you can see that the black levels and the blues are a little bit deeper a little bit more contrasty and there's a little bit more shading and gradation in the little waves as well also if you are watching hdr 10 material you can see up top there where it says picture mode it will automatically kick the projector into hdr picture mode and then if you are watching sdr you can go in and change your picture mode presets from here under light source we've got a couple different options here we've got normal which will keep the projector at its brightest output we've got eco which will dim down the projector also keep the fan a little bit quieter and then under smart eco this will automatically brighten up the led or dim the led depending on how bright or how dark your content is that you're watching on screen but i think you're probably going to want to keep this on the normal mode for the brightest output and the best hdr the next section is audio We've got sound mode, we've got some presets for that. We've got cinema, music, game, sports, and user. Under user, you can adjust the EQ from 100 hertz, 300, 1 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, and then 10 kilohertz bands. Under audio outputs, we've got Trevolo, which is the built-in speakers, SPDIF, which is the optical, audio return, which is the HDMI EARC, and then the 3.5 mil input jack. If you have this hooked up to an audio system, you can change the audio output format, but right now it's grayed out. We've got mute, on or off, volume, and then left, right channel settings. The next section is display. We've got aspect ratio. You've got auto, four by three, 16 by nine, and then back to auto. The next is auto source search. This will automatically turn to the active input on the projector. You can rename your source inputs. There's a grayed out 3D option, and then for HDMI settings, we've got HDMI format, we've got auto, limited, full, and then back to auto, HDMI equalizer, HDMI EDID, electronics control, which is your HDMI CEC. And then the next section is installation. For projector position, we've got front, front ceiling, rear, and then rear ceiling, and then back to front. So you can mount this on your ceiling if you have the proper mounts. Under 2D keystone, you can adjust the angle of the projector to get this squared up with your wall which you can adjust the top or the bottom of the screen and also the left and right portion of the screen as well hold down the ok button for two seconds and then that'll reset automatically or you can keep it held down and it will go into automatic screen fit mode by itself the next section is corner fit so you can go ahead and choose whatever corner you want to adjust if you want to bring the upper left corner down you can slowly do that in small increments or you can bring it inwards. So you have a little bit more granular control over the 2D keystone correction. So you can do that for all four corners if you'd like to get everything squared up with your screen. Then hold it down for two seconds again to reset everything back to normal. Then the next section is screen fit, which will try to automatically fit the screen to your wall if you have something off-centered. Under object avoidance, if you are standing in front of the projector, the projector will automatically adjust the image to fit your screen, which will automatically move the picture off to the side. The next section is focus. You can turn a real-time focus adjustment on and off manually. Auto focus sensitivity, we've got normal, high, then back to normal. And then if you want, you can go into manual focus and adjust the manual focus yourself. The next option is the ambient light sensor, which will automatically brighten or dim the projector as need be. We've got your test pattern, you can turn that on or off. And then high altitude mode will ramp up the projector's fan to keep the projector cool. Next section is system. We've got different options for language, menu settings, which you can relocate the projector's menu from bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left, center, and then back to the bottom left. You can keep the menu on at all times or you can set a specified time where the menu will disappear from five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, or you can always keep it on until you turn the menu off. Now under auto calibration, you can turn this on or off, which will let the projector calibrate its own color. 
Under light source information, you can see how many hours are on the projector by checking out its usage here. We've got normal mode, two hours, eco, zero hours, smart eco mode, zero hours, and then the equivalent light hours, four hours in total. We've got operation settings. We've got a reminder message on or off, power on or off settings. We've got direct power on or off. Under auto power off, you can set a timer from 25 minutes to a max 30 minutes, or you can disable it altogether. And then the last section is information, which will give you all the source information being fed into the projector, such as resolution, the source input, picture mode, light source mode, 3D format, color system, dynamic range, firmware version, and service code. As far as the 4K image quality, this is right there with BenQ's other 4K projectors that I've reviewed in the past. Now keep in mind that this is a 1080p projector that uses pixel shifting technology to give it the 4K resolution. So if you do get right up on the screen, you can make out individual pixels. But at about six or eight feet away, you won't see any pixels. Everything will look perfectly smooth, just like it would on, let's say, an 85 inch or larger television set. You can see here that this is a razor sharp, crystal clear image. It's still a DLP upscaling projector, so you don't quite get the smoothness of say a JVC or a Sony, but you do get that extra crispy DLP look. So if you do like that crisp, detailed 4K image quality, then DLP is definitely gonna be the way to go for you. Keep in mind that it's only 1500 lumens. So in comparison to say BenQ's own UST ultra short throw projector, you'll notice that there is a difference in brightness and lumen output. So this isn't gonna be the brightest projector out there. It's still plenty bright and gives you a lot of HDR pop in a very light controlled room. So if you do plan on using the projector with some lights on, I would recommend getting a screen with positive gain, which is gonna amplify the projector's brightness so you can use it with some lights on. For HDR brightness, the default is gonna be zero, but we do have a few other settings here. If we go up to plus one, you can see that the image gets brighter. You can go up another level to plus two. Or if you wanna go in the opposite direction, we can go to a negative two and then a negative one and then back to zero. So as you can see, the higher that you go up on the brightness slider, the more that the white levels and the specular highlights will blow out. So again, this is at a plus two and this is at a negative two. So if you keep your eyes on the background, you can see all kinds of detail in the highlighted areas. You can also see the gradation and color tone and shadow detail as well. While on the opposite end of the spectrum on a plus two, you lose some of the shadow detail and some of the definition on that ledge and also on the background where those lines are going towards the white light. They do lose definition there as well and does look very blown out. So if you want to meet it halfway and keep it at zero, that's kind of a safe bet between being not overly bright and not overly dim, which will still give you some nice bright specular highlights. As far as black levels, you can see here, this is a shot from Blade Runner 2049. If you look at Ryan Gosling over on the left side of the screen sitting in the chair, you can see that he's basically lost in shadow. As we go up on the slider, to the plus two setting, you can see how you can start making out features in his face. You can also see how much more detail is recovered in Batista's jumpsuit as well. If we bring this all the way down to a negative two, then you are just crushing a whole lot of detail. So whereas on the Aquaman demo, putting it on negative two brought out a lot of shadow detail and color gradation, since it is such a bright movie, whereas a dimmer movie, such as Blade Runner 2049, you'll have to go in the opposite direction and bring it up to a plus two. So again, depending on what type of movie you're watching and how bright or dim the content is, you might find yourself going into the HD or brightness slider and adjusting this on a title by title basis. Now, of course, being a DLP projector in this price category, the black levels, again, are not gonna be as deep and as contrasty as something like a JVC or Sony, which does cost several thousand dollars more. This is still in line with BenQ's other DLP projectors and that the black levels do slightly tend to lean more on the very dark gray side, as you can see here in this shot, where the black letterbox bars do lean more on the grayer side. But as far as giving the image some very nice contrast, it works very well for really bright scenes, which adds to the image depth and separation. So in its press category, it does a very good job at handling shadow detail in black levels. If you are a fan of 3D movies, this projector does support 3D. You've got a few different options here depending on what you're feeding into the projector. You can keep it on auto, frame sequential, frame packing, top, bottom, side by side, or you can turn the 3D off. 
If you're noticing that the 3D image is reversed, you can go under 3D Sync Invert and turn it on Invert, which should get it back to normal. Also, while watching 3D material, you can see that the light source mode is turned to normal. So if you are playing 3D, it'll automatically kick the projector into the brightest output. Now this might be hard to tell in the video, but there are four speakers built into the projector. Two firing towards the front of the room and two firing towards the back of the room. That means you'll have two left speakers and two right speakers. So going into the audio section, you can specify where you are seated in relation to the projector. So if the projector is on the left side of you, it'll adjust the balance so that there's more audio going to the right side rather than the left side. So again, you'll get a more balanced stereo reproduction. The projector is smart capable by using the included Android TV stick. Navigation using the Android TV stick is pretty snappy, so it shouldn't be a chore getting through the different apps or the menus. One thing that is missing from the Android TV stick is the compatibility with Netflix. So if you do want to use Netflix, you may have to sideload it or use a different streaming device. With that said, you can download all the other major streaming services such as Disney+, HBO Max, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and Google Play Movies. And as far as 4K HDR support, you can see here that YouTube does indeed support 4K HDR, as well as Disney+. At the time of this video, the BenQ GP500 is selling for $17.99. If you're serious about getting into home theater and you don't want to spend a lot of money, the BenQ GP500 is definitely a solid choice for getting that big screen home theater experience. And now with Avatar The Way of Water coming out in theaters, and the only way that you're going to be able to experience that movie at home the way it was meant to be seen is going to be in 3D. And of course, there are no 3D televisions out there right now, so your only other option is to get a 3D projector. You can spend a ton of money on a JVC or a Sony, or you can go entry level with the BenQ GP500, and you're right there with the nearly the same 3D quality that you would see at your local commercial cinema. As mentioned before, this is a 1500 lumen output projector, so if you do plan on using this with some lights on, you may want to pick up a screen with some positive gain, otherwise it will drown out the image. So for the best image quality, you're going to want to use this projector with the lights off or really, really dim. I found the colors to be fantastic once you got it dialed in, and the black levels are on par with other DLP projectors out there. So unless you're a real stickler for the highest fidelity image, I think you're going to be totally satisfied with the BenQ GP500. I found gaming performance to be adequate as well. It's not going to be quite as good as having a dedicated monitor, but for some big screen gaming, I think you're going to be totally fine with some casual playback. I just don't think you're going to win any high level competitions. Overall, I think the GP500 is a great projector for the asking price. It's bright enough to use with ambient lights on, has decent black levels, and 4K resolution that is razor sharp. And what I consider a very big bonus is that the projector does support 3D material. So for those huge blockbusters that are coming out in 2023, this will play them back with no problems with the supported 3D glasses. So what are your thoughts on BenQ projectors? Have you tried them out and what do you think of their performance? Leave your comments down below and let me know. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, then give the video a like. And if you're not subscribed yet, tap the subscribe button for more weekly videos.